Before doing a valve or ring job, make sure you have low compression on the engine. You can do this by buying a simple compression tester at Arbor Freight or another place and simply plug it into one of the spark plug holes. Remove all the other spark plugs but keep them uh, plugged up with paper so nothing goes down them and rotate the engine to, I, I, about four compression strokes. And if you have lower than 30, then you need either a valve or a ring job. To remove the head, disconnect the water pump, take it off, and then with a 5 8 inch uh, wrench, loosen all the head bolts. On the rear two most bolts, just loosen them, and you're going to lift them out with the head. With the head removed, what you want to do is rotate the engine so uh, number one, piston is up, and then number four will be up. Number two and three will be down. Put cloth, paper towels, etc. You don't want debris fall down to the piston chambers. Now you can inspect the general condition. Are the valves burnt, broken, missing? Are there any holes in the pistons? Just general condition, then clean it up with a wire brush. Okay, now you're going to have to expose the valves and valve lifter springs. Uh, to do that, just take off. Well, I'm going to show you an easy way to do it. This is the intake manifold and carburetor uh, together. I found the easiest way to do the valves is disconnect the fuel line from the carburetor and then loosen two wing nuts that are holding the intake manifold on. There's four wing nuts. Only loosen two Remove it, but keep the exhaust system in place. This is the exhaust manifold. I have found, and it's held on with these wing nuts. There's four wing nuts here, 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 and here. I have found it's a real pain to remove the uh, exhaust nut. So I just keep the exhaust manifold intact by only loosening up two to remove the intake manifold and then tightening down the two remaining studs for the exhaust manifold and just keep it in place. This will expose the springs and, and valves, which you're going to need to raise up with a lifting tool to remove one small pin to remove the valve. There are two types of valve lifting tools you're going to use to compress the valve stem spring in order to remove the retaining pin to remove the valve and spring assembly. Uh, Any one that you can get that you feel comfortable working with, go ahead. Now these procedures are courtesy of Mr. Glenn Chafin, a Model T Ford Club of America, a really great member, who described this in writing. So basically, again, you have eight valve lifters. You have four intake and four exhaust. Number one, four, five, and eight are your exhaust, while number two, three, Six and seven are your intake. That's why we're going to number these because they use a different procedure for each one. We have the head off. We're going to clean out any carbon. This one has been to the machine shop and milled down 30 thousandths and cleaned out. But you want the uh, carbon. What you're doing to remove the valve stem is see this little pin it goes through the hole. You're basically raising the spring up so you can push this pin out and pull the pin. Once you've pulled the pin, the entire valve stem can pull out. Now what you're doing, you're examining for do I have a smooth surface or do I have pitting and holes? 
If you have pitting and holes and breaks in the metal, you need to replace the valve. But not, we're just going to make it so it fits perfectly. The same way for the seat, you're going to check to make sure that it's nice and smooth and no pits. If you have pits, you can use a reamer to ream it out 30, 45, and 70 degrees to get a nice shiny surface, but not taking too much metal. Takes, for example, cylinder one, cylinder two. For the intake, you're going to raise cylinder number two to top dead center. When you remove the valve, it's a good idea to clean off all the carbon deposits underneath the valve with a wire brush, bronze brush, so it's shiny metal so it doesn't stick in the future. And here's the valve, nice and shiny after it's been hit with a bronze brush. All the carbon deposits are off. And this is the number one valve. Now you'll notice the two holes on top of this valve. These are the old style valves. If you can get a hold of them, then they're good shape. They're so much easier to use than the new stainless that have no holes. For the valve grinding, we go, I just add three little touches around the valve of coarse grinding compound. Little is better. Place the valve after you've removed the spring and the cups. There's no obstruction. It seats all the way down into the valve seat. It's extremely important when you're lapping the valves in not to go in a circular motion. You're only going in with downward pressure about one quarter turn back and forth and taking the valve out and removing it. Now this tool is a fantastic old tool that does all that work for you. To test if you've got a good valve seal, let's go ahead and take a black magic marker and coat all the way around the valve face and let it thoroughly dry. Shot. Okay. And we get a shot of it's turning the valve one quarter of a turn while pressing down the valve with the coarse and fine material in there. Take the valve out about every 10 turns and rotate it half a turn and put more solution on it. Okay, stop. Now, and the surface has been lapped. We have the black magic marker all around it. So we're going to put that in all the way down, taking the all the way down. And then we're going to turn that valve as though we were lapping the valve in. And taking the valve out. And what we're seeing, see how you have a shiny surface that black is worn off? That shows that we've got a good valve seat. Thank you. Now the number eight valve is, is the hardest one to get to because you can't use the automatic equipment and you're at the firewall. So here's a little trick that I use. Okay, what I do, and you can use for any of the valves, is gently grasp the bottom of the stem with a vice grips without marring the metal. Then you're going to pull down and grind back and forth, back and forth. I do about 20, put new grinding compound on, rotate the valve a quarter degree, and then do it again five times. Again, what I'm doing, I'm grasping the vice grips, pulling down with pressure, and rotating the valve just to grind it smooth. Before you finish the job, go ahead and take a wire brush, clean off all the edges so you get a good smooth seal, so no oil leakage. Also, take a wire brush, toothbrush, um, toothbrushes and gasoline work real good. Clean out all the old oil and crud so that it's just one more thing you do to make your car run better.
After you finish cleaning up your work, you know, clean the carbon off the tops of the piston heads, and everything, clean up your block, make sure everything's clean. But it's very important, all the bolt holes take either a drill trap, or what I do is I take a magnetic screwdriver down in each hole and turn around about 10 times and then blow it out with uh, compressed air to get this debris out so you get a good seating on the uh, pistons. And finally, do you see the debris coming out? When you go to put the head on, here's a, two tricks. You've got all the holes clean, your block is clean, the pistons are clean, the cylinders are clean. Lay the head gasket on the block and make sure all the holes line up properly first. I put an ultra thin coat of the ultra copper gasket on both sides of the gasket. Very, very thin. Hey, okay, now before you what you want to do is lay the gasket down on the head and have all the holes line up. You're going to put the gasket material on the head side touching first and then on the block side. Okay, so now what we have is a very thin layer of the high temperature copper gasket material on both sides of the gasket spread out with the finger with the glove so it's very thin to fill in any imperfections. This will also help the head stick, the gasket stick to the head. But there's one more trick you need to know. The two cylinder head bolts out next to the firewall have no clearance to put them in. So you're going to put these bolts in the head through the gasket before you mount the head on the engine. Now you can see I have the two rear head bolts in loose. And what you're going to do is very carefully line up the head nearly perfectly and then start putting in some bolts very loosely and not tighten them to make sure all the holes line up. 